Hey, it's John. Welcome back to the 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay. Heck yeah. There's a link in the description for them. You should go click it. And speaking of the studios, we're still doing the build out. Like it's still, it's getting there. It's getting, it's a little dark over there. It's a little dark over there and we'll get some lights over there so it's not so scary. Probably get some more stuff on this wall. And well, I don't want to tell you about that. <laughs> not yet. But what I've been doing is keeping track of the progress of the build out over on my Patreon. And there's a link down below if you want to follow along for all the crazy shenanigans that happened there. Like how the table I'm standing at, I just built hours earlier. No joke. This is the Prusa XL. As you know, I've covered this in my previous video and I, I talked a lot about the multicolor aspects of a five headed monster that this machine is. And the reason I have all of these flexible filaments out is because I'm keeping up on a promise I made in that video where I said, and that's kind of where I want to explore with this next is multi-material. Now, when we talk about multi-material machines, we, we, there are plenty of them that all send the same filaments through the same nozzle. And so for doing multi-material, not just multi-color, but multi-material through a single nozzle, then everything needs to have a very similar melting temperature or else jams or clogs or whatever can occur. And where a multi-headed machine, such as this Prusa XL, excels, get it? We can send all of these different filament types through the five different heads. And because there's five heads, each head can have its own melting temperature. You can have 300 Celsius on one and 190 Celsius on the other and any mix in between on the rest of the three. It's fabulous. So in this new build out, in this new studio powered by PCB way, I've been finding all of my filaments, all of my filaments. In fact, I put them all on a shelf over there and I snapped a little photo. And in that photo is every single filament that I had at the old studio that was not on the wall. Every single spool is now here in the new one. And I went digging through, finding all of my flexible filaments, like all of them, all of them. To begin my exploration in multi-material, I wanted to just throw some flexible materials at this. The XL uses an extruder, which has a very constrained filament path, which makes it perfect for printing flexible materials like TPUs and TPEs. I got out some TPU and it is a, it's, it's, it's that one over there. I forgot the name. It is a Fibrology Flex 40D, Fibrology Flex 40D. And this one just says flexible white. What I did is try to make these really cool Mandalorian inspired coasters that I found over on printables. I liked it. I like the idea of a coaster because it lets me practice in this multi-material stuff that I want to work in. But at the same time, it's not really tall, so it shouldn't take a long time because there's not going to be that many layers. So I thought, coasters, let's do it. So this one, uh, Dinjarin, of course, and this is in that Fibrology one and that generic white one. And then I also did this one. So, so this was in the same batch. I had the blue as Dinjarin, and then I had the black and the whites. The black is a polymaker flexible 95D, something like that. But it had been left out for <clears throat> years. And so it had absorbed some moisture out of the air. As we all know, flexible filaments are hygroscopic, not hydro, hygro, hygroscopic. And that means they can absorb moisture from the air around them over time. And so I believe what had happened is that it did that. And that's why it got this jammy jam. I mean, it still looks freaking cool, but I sent it away to my food dehydrator and it will live another life, hopefully soon, nice and fresh and ready to print some coasters or whatever, whatever I got. But I mean, being able to print in a flexible material just feels good. Like it feels wonderful. It's just being able to rah, 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 just do it, right? This one still looks okay, like I said, but you know what? We'll make another one someday. Now I thought, ooh, let's get weird. Let's throw some PETG in the mix. So over there is some 
Fibrology PATG. And what I did is I used this white flexible, then that Fibrology flexible, and then for the for the Dinjarin details, the one that's kind of inset, I did PET G. And it worked. It worked. This is the joy. This is the absolute joy that I experience when doing experimenting with 3D printing is that it just worked. I did enable ironing, which takes the nozzle really slowly over the surface, only extruding a microscopic amount of material to make a really smooth surface. And it did a really good job with that. And there it was. It was on the build plate. And I thought, I should take this off. And I tried. And I tried. And I was using the powder-coated PEI sheet on the Prusa machine, this one, and it stuck. Like, I know flexibles stick really well to PEIs, but man, man. And in doing so, I sort of permanently disfigured the PET G within the print. So while this is a success, it still kind of sits a little cattywampus. I like how it looks. The PTG is in there really good and you can give it some flex. I would, I would still consider that to be a success, just like that one right there. What if I tried PLA? Can PLA and TPU stick? So I loaded some Prusament PLA, Prusament Black PLA, and this orange Polymaker TPU that's just wonderful color. It's just a wonderful color. Both times, the Prusament PLA would not stick to the TPU, like at all. It just it just try, it balled up on the surface as it was trying to lay down a certain line and it wouldn't stick to it both times. The TPU stuck to the PLA though, because this little, this little Grogu one, that's TPU embedded within the PLA and it's, it's there. I don't know. I, I, I mean, you tell me. You okay? Then I thought I really wanted to try something cool. I had seen this tweet from Joseph Prusa talking about painting, but multi-material. And it just, it was one of those moments that really caught me off guard because I was like, of course, of course it does that. Of course. When you have Prusa Slicer open and you have all of your filaments loaded, you can assign different filament types to each one. For example, flexible on one, rigid on two. And when you're painting in Prusa Slicer, you're not painting necessarily colors, you're painting extruder numbers. So you want this piece of geometry to use extruder two and not one. And that's what the painting is doing. I went on to printables and I looked up a phone stand. Let's print it. I want, I want the surface that contacts the desk to be flexible. And I want the surface that contacts the phone to be flexible, but the rest of it, I want it to be PETG. I used the white flexible and I used that Fibrology PETG because I knew those were going to work and I set forth and I painted the surface that was going to touch the phone in this phone stand and the surface on the bottom that's going to touch the desk in a flexible material. And I printed it and it worked. It worked. Like it's, it's so cool. It's so cool. So this surface, this inside surface here, is all flexible material. So when you take out your phone and you, and you do that, you're not resting it on a rigid piece of material, you're resting it on a bumper. And it just feels better. And it looks cool. And part of what really attracts me to this is the customization of products. Whereas if you're designing a screwdriver handle, and you want grippy material and rigid smooth material, you can print that all in one go. You could make your own custom screwdriver handles that aren't just shiny plastic. Some of them can be flexible for a bumper or a grip. And that is fascinating. And that's going to be wonderful as we go forward with machines such as the Prusa XL and others in that we can take these models and these geometries from 2015, 2014, 2019, all of these older models that we've printed before and now paint on these surfaces that we want to be different materials. We're making these end use products 
that are better. And I love it. This phone stand is better because it's not just a single piece of rigid plastic. There's thought that went into this from me personally, and I was able to add to this model utilizing a different material to change my experience with it. And I love that. And I'm really curious if you out there watching this have experienced this either with a Prusa XL or a multi-material print that you customized, or if you have been given something from someone who did the customizations to bless you with it. I'm really curious if you're either one of those groups and I'd love to hear from you. One of the things though that, that kind of got me on this is that there was a problem and I don't know what caused it. You can see that this has a flexible material racing stripe in it where it shouldn't. That's not, that's not where it belongs. I sliced it in Prusa Slicer and I exported the G-code and then using Prusa Connect, I sent it to the machine and it printed it and I came back and that's what it looked like. So I thought, I'm just gonna re-slice it. Now this time, I didn't use any infill and I did 100% perimeters, which does make it a solid piece of plastic, but it does take out the infill, so everything is aligned. I don't know, for a phone stand, it seems like if you were gonna make a product like this, it's not a bad way to go. So then I sliced it again and I sent it through Prusa Connect again and it printed it out again. And let's take a look at it. This comes right off. Boy, howdy, I love that. It's perfect there is a, okay it's a little bit furry and at this point i would usually be like oh i know how to take care of this and i'd bring out my hacksmith lightsaber and hit the fur with it and it would be gone but again that's still at the old studio we're still moving stuff so for now we just have ourselves a hairy phone stand this is what i've been able to do with multi-material with this machine so far there was one other attempt that i made and it was utilizing a really really flexible material. What I had tried to do was load one of these recreous filaments into the machine. And these are like a rubber band, like a crazy, super flexible rubber band. So the loading procedure on this machine is on either side, you insert the filament and you feed it in through the tube and it dives down and back up and then into the direct drive and extruder that's on each of the five heads. But with this material, having to feed it into either side, it's like pushing a really limp rope. And you just push a little bit at a time. And it took me 15 minutes to load my extruder with this recreous filament. And then I tried to print with it. And of course, pulling it through there as a direct drive extruder would do, didn't really work and it failed, which is unfortunate. However, however, I have another machine that can print flexible materials with an extruder, and that's the Prusa i3 Mark IV. So what I did as a test, just to make sure, just to make sure, is send through this Polymaker TPU 90. This is good stuff. And the filament pathway, obviously not constrained on the Mark IV because it's just above and it feeds right down into the extruder. So I fed that through, and this is what we got. Super duper flexible, and it works, and I love the heck out of it. Will the recreous filament, the ultra rubber band filament, will it make its way through? Let's find out. There we go. This is the Mark IV. This is the ultra rubber band material from Recreus. And it did seem to work. Let's see if it comes off the build plate. It's gonna take some time. Oh, once it starts to peel. There we go. Here it is. And this is like this is flexible, this is even more flexible. Like I, this is really cool to hold on to. Okay, so this gives me hope because what I could do then is fashion some sort of spool holder above and I could pop this out and then put in my own PTFE just so it's guided and then have the material go in from above. I just have to short circuit the sides, I guess. I don't know, hey, but that worked. That works, so we know the Mark IV, the Mark IV can do it, it has an extruder, these are an extruders, so they should be able to do it as long as we stop constraining the filament pathway. Success! Now obviously I'm not done, and I'm really excited to tell you about what 
I'm going to attempt next. And it has to do with a couple of these filaments over here because one of them you've probably heard about before, but this other one, no one in the world has this except for me. I'm the only person that has this one. So to start, this is Ataraxia Arts Flexible PLA. Flexible PLA. And I said, it's just PLA with some TPU, right? And they said, no. So I want to, I want to explore this just a little bit more because you're supposed to be able to print this like a PLA, but it ends up being flexible. So this is one of the materials that I'm excited to be able to use on the next Struder platforms. The other one though, I've teased this before on social media, but I've never done anything with it on video. And that's because I'm the only one in the world that has this. Long ago, long, long ago, someone from King of Prussia sent me an email saying they have EVA filament. You know EVA foam, the foam that cosplayers use to build their incredible creations. This guy had taken foam, the EVA foam, and plasticized it in a way to be able to make filament. And these labeled two, one, and three. So these are all EVA foam filament. This one over here obviously looks a bit more like foam and these ones just aren't dyed a certain way, but I'm the only one in the world that has this. And I've tried to reach out to this guy multiple times, but he's not answering emails. So I have, I have no idea if it's possible to get more, if it can be made again, if whatever, but this, this is EVA foam filament and it's the only four spools of it that exist in the world. And I feel like I want to experiment with it, but I don't want to, I don't want to waste it because it's a very limited resource. And so if you had access to an EVA foam filament, what would you print with it? Because I do. And I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Well, thanks again for watching and coming to us from the ever expanding 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCB Way. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, flexible print all the things, <laughs> and as always, high five.